Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Natalie and this is episode two of the Stitch Magic Knitting Podcast. Before we jump into the podcast, I just wanted to go over a few housekeeping items. First of all, I wanted to thank you all so much for the reception on my first two videos. Honestly, when I posted them on YouTube, I had no idea if anyone was even going to watch them, especially because I didn't promote them on my Instagram, which is where I put all of my knitting content. So thank you so much for all of your kind comments and also just for watching and hearing what I have to say. Second, I have a new background for today's video from my previous two videos. It's a little bit more interesting, like there's a little more going on in the background, but the lighting is probably a bit more iffy and also it's closer to the front of my apartment so there is more street noise. So please let me know which of the two you'd prefer. I can also try and jazz up the other background that I was previously in with some art or something. But honestly, my room is pretty small and there aren't a lot of spaces to film. Like actually right now I'm sitting on top of my desk. So I don't exactly have room to set up a really nice looking podcasting corner, but we'll make do with what we have. So if you've ever seen a knitting podcast before, I'm going to follow standard format. So I'll start with what I'm wearing and then move on to my finished objects and whips, chat a little bit about my knitting plans and then move into acquisitions. And finally, just finish off with a bit of chit chat um, about, you know, my personal life or about knitting, whatever. So I'll start with what I'm wearing. Today I am wearing my vest number one by My Favorite Things Knitwear. This is one of the first pieces I ever knit that was like, felt like a real garment. Um, it wasn't made with super chunky yarn or anything and I thought it turned out well. It's knit in heavy merino from Knitting for Olive held with a strand of soft soft mohair, both in dusty olive. So now I'll talk about my finished objects for the month of October. Two of them you'll have seen in, as whips in a previous video and two of them are brand new. So there's a little bit of a variety. So starting off, the first finished object I wanna talk about is my Walpole Pullover V-neck edition test knit for Tamara Makes. This is knit in one strand of Istex Platilopi in the shade Spruce and one strand of Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in the shade Dusty Olive that I had left over actually from the vest that I'm wearing. So I know I talked in the previous video about maybe turning it into a dress, but ultimately I decided it looked best as a sweater. So I kept it at the length specified in the pattern and didn't make any mods and I knit a size two. I really like how this turned out. It's the perfect cozy oversized sweater. And I think one of my favorite things about it is this back shoulder detail. It's like a sloping effect before it goes into the drop shoulder. Other than that, the sweater is fully knit in half fisherman's rib using the knit below method. So it's a little different from any half fisherman's rib I'd worked previously. As for how I like the finished object, I really like it. I've already worn it a ton around the house whenever I need to throw on a cozy layer because it is starting to get a little chillier here now that fall is setting in. And I know some people find the platilopi a little itchy, but personally, especially after blocking, I feel like it softened up a lot and I actually really like the fiber, like the fabric that the combination of these two yarns made. Overall, the pattern is still in testing, but the test closes on November 14th and the pattern should be released shortly thereafter, so if you're interested, keep an eye out for that. Okay, so my second finished object for this month was a whip in last month's video, and it didn't look like much then because it was essentially just a long rectangle of fabric, but we actually finished it. And that is the Skagen Tee by Weter Design. This is knit in one strand of Blue Fiber Co. Cash Merino DK. And the last time you saw it, it was just the bottom body portion, and that's because it's a bottom-up raglan, and the first time I've ever done a bottom-up raglan. I said that I didn't think I saw myself finishing this in the last month, but honestly, my knitting really picked up on it once I got to the yoke section, and then I couldn't put it down, so I'm really excited to have finished this. It's also my first garment where the yarn has any percentage of cashmere, and maybe it's a bit of a placebo, but I do think that it feels really soft and nice to wear. It's been pilling a little bit under the armpits, but that's because I'm still using crutches, and I think once I'm off crutches, that won't really be an issue, so I think I'm just going to avoid wearing this for now while I still need to use the crutches to walk. But yeah, I think I also mentioned in last month's video how on Ravelry, this pattern in particular by people who finished the pattern 
was supposed to be a bit confusing and I definitely agree with that. I think the pattern could have used another round of edits, but overall I think with a little bit of deciphering I was able to get what the pattern was going for and I put full notes on my Ravelry so if you're attempting to knit this and you're a little confused, maybe you can check my notes and see if those help. The main mod I made to this garment was making it long sleeve because the original has elbow length short sleeves. And that's mainly because I had three whole skeins of yarn and I wanted to use up all of it. Like I didn't want to have any scrap left in stash. And I think I accomplished that because I pretty much only have an eight gram ball of the yarn left after doing the sleeves, which I think is a reasonable amount to have left over after a project. So in order to do the sleeves, because I'm pretty bad at estimating how much yarn something will take in a garment, I provisionally cast on both of the sleeves finished knitting the yoke and the button band, and then moved back to the sleeves to knit them to the proper length. And all in all, the sleeves ended up taking a whole skein on their own, and the body and the yoke of the um, sweater, or of the top, both took two skeins. So that's the breakdown. I also am just using these buttons that I found at a local fabric store. I got them like in a pack for $2. So. Uh, pretty reasonable, but overall I'm really happy with how this came out. I think it's a really basic silhouette that will be super wearable. I could see myself making another one of these in a solid color, but far in the future it's not really on my knitting plans for anytime soon. Alright, so my next finished object you won't have seen in any of my previous videos because I started and finished it within this month. So the finished object in question is this. This is the Costal Tank by CL Knits, and you can see it's a tank that's knit 100% in half twisted rib, and it's just got a really basic silhouette. I honestly knit this because it reminded me a lot of the Aritzia Sculpt Rib tank tops that cost like $60, and I bought this yarn all the way back in April with the intention of making this exact pattern. The yarn is Thought to Thread Sock Yarn in the shade Novel Pages. I mentioned this in my yarn stash tour video, but I went up to Seattle back in April to visit my boyfriend who lives there, and we went to a trunk show at Acorn Street Shop where Tyler from Thought to Thread was selling yarn, and so I got a bunch of his yarn, and you'll see more of it later in this video as well, but this is one of the yarns. and. It's actually a pretty nice sock yarn because it's super wash merino plus some, I think, nylon content, but there's also 20% mohair, which gives it a soft fuzz, very subtle, and I'm a big fan of it. I made size 3 with no mods, and while I made no mods, I did make a mistake that I guess kind of changes how the pattern is made. And to explain a little bit, there's two sets of customizations you can do for this pattern. The first is you can either have straight straps like I did or you can have crossed straps which cross in an X in the back. And the other modification you can make is you can either make the body straight or you can do a set of waist shaping decreases on the side. So if you look here I decided to do the decreases which I think look really nice. However if you are knitting the either version of the tank top the decreases are supposed to be set Half, exactly halfway around the circumference of the body and that starts since it's a bottom-up camisole that starts very much at the beginning of the knitting and I improperly counted right off the bat and my separation for the front and back stitches and where I made the decrease or where I made the increases was off from the beginning. I think I was about eight stitches off in either direction and as a result there's more stitches on the front than on the back half of the body, but honestly I think it was such a small amount that you can't really tell when I'm wearing it, and I don't think it affects my overall uh, enjoyment of the garment. So I decided, once I realized my mistake when I was doing the decreases up to shape the front and back of the tank top, I just let it go and I kept doing it. Additionally, one thing I tr attempted, and let me know if you have any tips for this or if you've ever even attempted this, is to do a Kitchener's graft on the upper sleeve because right now it's bound or it's knitted together with a three needle bind off, which I think looks fine because the strap is at the top. But I did attempt to be a little fancier and do Kitchener's, but doing Kitchener's and half twisted rib is no fun. And I looked up a tutorial online that was like, technically explaining how to do it, but I couldn't wrap my head around it, so I ended up just doing the three needle bind off as specified in the pattern. But let me know if you've ever done something like that before, because I think it would be maybe 
not the most useful skill to have because I don't know how many half twisted rib items I'll have, but maybe something that can elevate the look of a tank like this. So my last finished object is actually not a knitting finished object, but it is a sewing finished object. And for context, I haven't really sewn anything since April. I made the saguaro set by Friday Pattern Company for a friend's like spring fling type of function back in April and I haven't touched either of my sewing machines since but I wanted to get back into sewing and there's a few items I want to make in the fall so I wanted to pick a pretty easy project that I could complete lazily over the course of a week. I think I'm trying to prescribe to more of a slow sewing mindset because in the past I've been able to churn out projects in like one day and then I didn't feel very good afterwards because I'm just sewing all day and not taking great care of myself along the way. So this one I did stretch out over the course of a week, but honestly the sewing itself was pretty simple. And that is the Elliot Top by Cool Stitches. I wanted to make this for a really long time, but I never got around to doing it. And this is made in a organic cotton double gauze in the shade Milky Tea from Blackford Fabrics. The mods I made to this, I knit a size, or I, I sewed a size small with no grading, but I only ended up doing one tie at the bottom because that's just what made sense based on where it fell on my body. I honestly think I should have graded up the front because I think my bust is a little bit bigger than intended for the size small, and as a result, it's very cropped on me in that regard. Um, but. I think I just need to grade it because the back fits great and the sleeves fit great. It's literally just that I needed a little more coverage in the front. Additionally, instead of just doing a fold over hem on the neckline, I ended up doing a bias binding because when I folded over the neckline, it exposed too much because the top, the front portions were a little too small. So in order to get some of that length back, I just did a bias binding. Bias bindings are kind of my enemy, but this one turned out okay, at least from the front. There's a few sections along the inside where I didn't catch it fully, but I think I'm just gonna leave it because that's not really the point of this project for it to be perfect. And honestly, I'm kind of out of practice. So yeah, I'm really glad to have this. I think it'd be a really fun little top to wear out to brunch with friends or to wear in the park when it gets a little bit warmer back in the spring. But overall, very pleased with how this came out. Okay, that's all of my finished objects for the month of October. Now let's move into my whips. I'll start with the ones that were present in last month's video. So the first whip I have is my last test knit of the year, and that is the Groningen Pullover by Ellis Knitwear. The last time you saw it, I had part of one sleeve done, and since then I finished that sleeve, finished another sleeve, and have made good progress on the front part of the garment and this is going to be sort of a pullover with a collar so i just split on the front for where the collar will eventually be double knitted and this is what it's going to kind of look like eventually it's all knit flat in four pieces so you knit the sleeves the front the back and then block everything seam it and then knit the collar and honestly, I've been having a little bit of trouble with my motivation for this pattern because it is knit flat. Like honestly, it's not a lot of knitting. Once I pick up steam, it's really fast to knit up each of the pieces, but I just haven't been super motivated since some of my other projects are a little easier to knit. But I'm definitely going to finish by the deadline. I'm definitely still excited about the finished product because I wouldn't have signed up for the test if I didn't like it. And I'm very excited to knit the collar because I've never knit an item with a collar before. Forgot to mention, but I'm knitting size two and I'm knitting that in Mancha Lopez Wool Dreamers in the shade Grease. I bought five plates originally from Busy Work Craft Supply when I was ordering it because I was like, I wanted to make sure I had enough yarn, but honestly, I think five plates is too much, so I'm going to have some left over. Luckily, the shop has a pretty generous return policy, so I think I'm going to end up mailing back at least one of the plates. And even though I have to pay for shipping, for me, it's worth it for my mentality of not wanting to have excess in stash. So I'll just send that back to them and not have to worry about making a scrappy project. Not that a full plate is anything um, that I wouldn't be able to make anything from it, but I just don't need excess yarn in my life like that. So that is my first whip and that'll be definitely done by the next video because the deadline is November 30th and I want to make sure I have it in on time. 
so far I've never not finished a test in it and I know people do have to end up dropping out or not finishing for a myriad of reasons but so far I haven't had to and I don't think I'll need to for this test knit either. So the next whip I have is my Moby sweater and since you last saw it I've worked a good deal on the body, I've knit the collar and I've also knit a sleeve which I'd like to talk to you about in a minute and I'm knitting size extra small with one strand of Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in the shade marzipan and one strand of knitting for all of soft silk mohair in the shade putty and I think the combination of the two really mellows out the color of both of them it's this nice like bone colored garment that I think is going to be a really nice color to wear and I'm really pleased with how it's coming along but I do have a few notes and I do need a little bit of feedback on one of the sections so first of all I didn't knit a gauge swatch which I mentioned in my last video but honestly there weren't a ton of instructions on how to knit the gauge swatch and I think people now have been posting more of their swatches on Instagram so I have a better idea of what the gauge swatch should have looked like but I didn't gauge swatch I just jumped right into it and I think the body on the extra small is maybe a bit snug to my body um, I don't have nearly as much positive ease as she does in her finished object photos and I know cables block bigger but I watched Handmade by Florence's podcast where she finished her extra small Moby sweater and she said it honestly didn't grow that much. Um, so to combat that, I decided for the first time ever to do short row shaping on the sleeves and I had never done that in a pattern before so I don't know why now was when I decided would be the best time to do it. But I thought that would combat the kind of bunching under the arm that happens when you don't have as much positive eaves coming off of the body and sure enough it did when I try it on and I'll put a clip when I try it on there isn't really that much bunching under the sleeve which I'm happy with but I do feel like the sleeve has a ton of volume in general compared to the actual size of the body and I'm not sure if I love that so you can see that I bound off the sleeve with just a regular bind off and that's in case I need to unwind and frog I didn't want to unpick a tubular so I think my current game plan is to finish the body and then block this entire piece, see if the body becomes a little bit more proportional to the volume in the sleeve, and then knit the second sleeve either the same way or to change it up and then have to frog the first sleeve and re-knit that the way I knit the second sleeve. But let me know if you think it looks too bulky or if you have any tips about doing the short row shaping on the sleeve. I'll link the tutorial I followed below because again like I said it's my first time really doing short row shaping on a sleeve so I just separated out a third of the stitches at the top and then added one additional stitch on each side when I turned. I don't know if that's the correct proportion but that's what I did and it's a little bulky. So let me know how you think it looks if you think I'm gonna have to change anything for the second sleeve. I really don't want to have to frog this sleeve but I'd rather have a really nice finished garment that I don't have to think like what if at the end of every time I wear it. Additionally, I think my knitting on this has slowed down a little bit, which it doesn't look like it has because I made a lot of progress this month, but honestly, it does hurt my wrists, and I think it's a combination of the needle size, which is a size 4mm needle, compared to the thickness of the yarn, as well as the fact that it's my first time doing cables. And honestly, the cables don't really hurt, but what really hurts is doing the faux cabling section in the middle, like I felt like that's the part that's the most grating on my wrists. So ultimately, I don't know if I'm going to finish this this month, especially with my test knit deadline, but I do want to finish it by the end of the year. So my next two whips are both new to this month. I cast them on in the month of October. One of them is for myself and one of them is actually my first gift knit. But the knit that I'm making for myself is actually going to be a pair of pants. If you watched my first podcast, you know that the Sporty Knit Skort test that I did for Handmade by Florence, which by the way is out now, was my first pair of knitted bottoms that I ever made. But I started working on the Boring Biker Pants by Boring Knit this month, and I've already made, I feel like, a good amount of progress. I finished the entire, like, sort of hip crotch area, and I've already moved on to the leg separation, and I'm working on knitting the legs. This is knit, I'm knitting a size medium and I'm knitting this in drops cotton merino in the shade black. And I've mentioned it a little bit before with the yarn I used for the skirt, but the story behind these pants is that I bought a boring box all the way back in like, I don't know, May or June. 
maybe even earlier, with the intention of making the pants in the cool dark brown color that they had on their website. But I ordered a size extra small and I don't know what compelled me to do that. I didn't measure my waist when I ordered it and I was using like my retail waist size when I should have actually measured my waist and done it according to the pattern. So I didn't have nearly enough yarn to finish this, but I ended up repurposing that yarn for the skirt, and I bought cotton merino from Drops, which is a similar composition to the yarn they sent me in the box to make these. And I definitely have enough yarn now. I might even have a little bit of extra, but I decided to knit the medium because that's what my waist actually corresponds to. And even with the medium and I'm hitting gauge, it's a little snug around my like the this top section. Like I feel like it's just a teeny bit see-through when I put them on. But overall, I think the fit is correct. I don't know. I guess I could size up to a large and be a little oversized, but I think the medium is going to be okay. And I'm just knitting a little bit of the leg so I can try them on again more properly and see if I'm okay with that. Honestly, it's already not the most size inclusive pattern, but the fact that I might even have to knit the large after hitting gauge is like not promising, seeing as I am far from the largest person that might want to wear these pants. But um, yeah, I'm not sure if that's a me pattern with the fiber I chose or how I'm knitting it, or if it's a problem with the pattern itself. But I do really want to finish these and I wanted basically a long-term basic stockinette project I could use if I want to bring it to like the movies which is where I get some knitting done or like bring it out. I know pants is kind of a big item to be bringing out as like a travel project but I really don't mind I just throw it in my tote bag and I don't anticipate finishing this necessarily soon. I know I've made a lot of progress but it is now that I'm at the leg separation kind of more of a mindless knit and I anticipate having to work on this over the next few months, so you'll see maybe a little bit of progress each month, but I'm not like pedal to the metal trying to finish this as soon as possible because I know it's going to take a while. All right, so my last finished object for this month is my first gift knit ever. I am mostly a selfish knitter. I love knitting garments for myself, and I think in part it's because I was growing my knitting skills this year and I didn't necessarily feel confident in being able to gift someone anything. But I think I'm finally at that point where I feel like my knits are worth being gifted and I also feel that the person that I am gifting this to is definitely knit worthy, will definitely respect the amount of time I put in, and will treat the garment with care. And that's my boyfriend. We've been dating for almost five years and I wanted to knit him a sweater for Christmas. So this is my progress on his sweater. And I just split for sleeves yesterday, which is really exciting because prior to that, all of the stitches were bunched up on the cable and it didn't look very nice to show to y'all. Um, but this is the Hansholm sweater by Petite Knit and it's knit in one strand of Thought to Thread Persistence DK in the shade Whiskey and Tobacco. Again, got this yarn up in Seattle when I visited my boyfriend and he actually picked it out himself because I love the color, but it's not one I usually go for for myself, so it's pretty unique to be able to work in a different palette, which is also kind of the fun of gift knits, is like knitting something you wouldn't normally knit for yourself. That being said, I definitely do plan on borrowing it once I give it to him, so it's kind of double duty, a gift for him, a gift for me. But this is just a top-down raglan sweater in the round, it has some short row shaping to raise the neck as you can see, and I didn't realize how badly I needed a top-down raglan in my life because it's been a long time since I've knit one. I've knit a lot of top-down garments, but they're ones where you knit the back yoke, then the front two pieces, and then connect for the body eventually, whereas, you know, a raglan just, it's all on the same cable from the very beginning, which I love. I haven't knit a raglan, a top-down raglan in the round since my Benny sweater, which was all the way back in like April, maybe. Um, and I've really, really been enjoying knitting on this. I mean, starting now, it's just going to be stockinette as well, but doing the raglan increases and just not being able to work on a design like this was very easy. It was easy for me to get into a flow, and I feel like that's why I was able to finish so much so quickly, because I've only been working on this for the last few days, like less than a week. So it's been very exciting to see this knit up and I'm really excited to give it to him for Christmas. Um, so yeah, I guess that's all on that. Oh, and I'm knitting a size small. I 
my boyfriend visited for Halloween and I made sure to get all of his measurements so that I could make sure that it's the correct size and lock it to his proportions and he's coming back in November so I think I might make him try it on with his eyes closed just to see the fit. But that is all of my finished objects for the month. If I'm going to be honest, I don't know if I see myself casting on anything else by the end of the year and I know that sounds a little crazy and I probably will go back on that but Right now, obviously for this month, my priorities are going to be the test knit first and foremost, and then the gift knit, which if everything works out, I'd like to send him home with it wrapped up over Thanksgiving when he visits so I don't have to spend money on mail, on postage to mail it to him. So it'd be really nice if I could finish up those two projects this month. And then I said I want to finish my Moby by the end of the year, so that'll probably be a big focus in December and as you know the pants are just ongoing. I guess I could see myself casting stuff on next month but that's for next month's podcast. But if I do cast anything on this month because we all know me and that I lack self-control to work on just the few things that I have, I could see myself casting on one or two of three things. And these are all items where I already have the patterns and I already have the yarn caked up and ready to go. And that is either my camisole number five my 9 p.m. tank by Tiff Knit, or the Sunday sweater mohair edition by Petite Knit. So um, we will see how that ends up going. Maybe you'll see a new cast on for next month, but no promises. All right, moving on to acquisitions. We are currently not buying yarn, as I said in previous videos, but I do have one tool acquisition for the month, and it's something I've wanted for a while, and I'm really excited that I finally took the plunge to get. And that is a set of Chowku shorties. So it comes in this cute little pouch with a front zip pocket. I don't think I have anything in there right now. And inside you have a set of like short cables. Oh, they also came with a few like T-pins and stitch markers. And then you get a set of very, very short cables. And also a set of interchangeable needles. So this set comes with two inch and three inch needles and I got from US size four to US size eight. So that's 3.5 millimeters to five millimeters, which are my most used sizes. And I got these exclusively to knit sleeves, which I know is a little crazy. I'm not really a sock knitter, so why do I need shorties? But it was driving me crazy to do magic loop for all my sleeves and cuffs. So I finally just got them. Additionally, I'm already in the Chagu ecosystem. I usually knit on red lace, four inches and having these just makes it really easy to mix and match with my current set of accessories as well and i've found that even though they're intended for sleeves and other like small circumference items i can knit with the three inch shorties for regular projects like i'm currently knitting with the three inch shorties for my pants because they use a 3.5 millimeter needle and my test knit also uses a 3.5 millimeter needle so i've just been using the three inch needles on the pants even before I got to the leg separation which is where you might want to use a shorty so I'm really excited about those they've already been getting so much use and it was a little bit of a learning curve to use them because you don't have like a lot of structure because they're so short but I feel like I'm getting the hang of it all right so that's pretty much it for a lot of the knitting talk um, but I figured I would just give some life updates some month updates whatever keep you in the loop so first, I wanted to touch on my recovery. If you didn't watch the first video and were a little confused earlier in the video when I alluded to using crutches, that is because I broke my ankle and I broke it back in August and then had surgery at the end of August and since then have been in recovery. But this month, we had a few really big milestones. First of all, I started physical therapy. It's been really exciting working with her and like setting goals. And I also have started being able to put weight on it, not full weight, but 25% weight this week. And hopefully by the end of the year, I'll be able to go home without having a boot on. So that is really exciting prospect, but it's still been hindering my day-to-day -day life. And so that's why I feel like I can finish so much knitting is because I'm home so much. I'm not doing a lot of the more active activities that I was previously doing. So in the last few months, if you feel like my knitting output has been a little wild, it has been because I just spend so much time at home now and I knit a lot. But I'm really happy with how my recovery for that is going. Additionally, 
yeah, I'm excited to have gotten back into sewing a little bit. In addition to the top that I showed you, I also threw together a Halloween costume for me and my boyfriend when he visited. It's a little bit niche, but I guess that's the joy of being able to make your own costumes. But it's just a red hoodie that we both ordered and then I cut up and sewed some adornments on. And it's a character from a Pokemon game that we both played when we were younger. It was Pokemon Emerald and we were Team Magma Grunts. Um, so I think it's really fun to just be able to make anything. I wanted to go in a little bit more for Halloween this year, but with the injury, it's been a lot of time where I couldn't sit upright, so sewing was a little bit out of the question. But I think next year I'm going to come back better than ever to do some sewing. Then the last thing I kind of wanted to talk about today was the status of the channel. So for the channel, I know I said, I don't know how many of you actually watched to the end of my videos, but I know I said that I wanted to have another video up between my yarn stash tour and this podcast, and that didn't quite happen. Not to say it was for lack of trying, because I actually tried to film a vlog sewing the Elliot top, because the structure I kind of wanted in my head was one podcast per month, one knitting video, and one sewing video. But the vlog that I produced... I didn't even edit the vlog, but the video footage I produced is a little bit heinous, and I think that's because I'm still just using my iPhone and one of the tiny flexi tripods to shoot. I can't really get all of the angles that like a real tripod would allow me to get, and additionally with the broken ankle, it's really hard to set up shots. Like I can't make one of those really aesthetic videos where it's like three seconds of me like working on something, and then like it's just a compilation of that throughout the video because setting up that many shots is really intensive for me. So I'll put some of the raw footage here, but it's not my best work. Hopefully I can improve a little bit in the future and like up my filmmaking game because I really would like to be able to produce those type of videos. Even if I know a lot of you are here for the knitting, so like even if they don't get a ton of views, like I said, video editing is something I've wanted to get better at for a really long time. And I think making some more produced vlog type videos would be one way to do that. So I'd like to get a little better at shooting those, but who knows, maybe I'll end up shooting another vlog and actually publishing it next month. No promises there, but there are a number of items I want to sew before the end of the year, so we're going to get lots of practice. I honestly feel like I learned a lot just from trying to shoot that vlog, even if it was kind of a fail. So we are working on improving altogether. But yeah, I guess... That's all I wanted to talk about today. Again, I guess this is a little bit shorter of a podcast because I actually have to go run out and meet some friends in a little bit. So hopefully it was still interesting and I did cover everything I wanted to cover. I guess I feel like I'm a pretty chatty person, but then I look at the time and it's not nearly as long as some other people's videos. I feel like some podcasts go on for like well over an hour and I don't think I'm necessarily there yet in terms of having enough to talk about. So let me know if there's any other segments you'd like to hear me talk about or give my opinion on in future podcasts. One thing I was thinking of was maybe, since I'm not really buying any yarn, doing a segment where I talk about how much yarn I've been able to knit out of stash that month. Um, so if you're interested in that, let me know. But yeah, overall, that's pretty much all for my month of October. Thank you so much if you made it this far, and I'll see you next time. Bye!